How do I follow Prince Mungo's brother? <laughs> I'm glad it's after Labor Day, or else they might be wearing all white. I'm not sure. So, anyway, my name is Zach Bragg, uh, or Zachary Bragg. Um, for those of you who uh, don't know me, a little bit about myself. Um, just a couple things before I get started. I don't cuss. Uh, during my set, so sorry, I don't expect any cuss words. Also, my favorite actor is uh, Jean-Claude Van Darn, so <laughs> just a couple little tidbits about myself. I'm glad to be here in Memphis. I'm, I'm actually from Tupelo, so I drove over here for open mic night, and uh, I read online that um, a survey was done recently for uh, the top, uh, or the happiest states in the Union, 1 through 50. And congratulations, Tennessee, you're number four. So, big hand for you guys. Uh, Mississippi, I think, was like number six. But what surprised me was that out of the top ten uh, happiest states in the Union, six of them were in the South. And it really surprised me because I tried to think what we had in common that makes us all happy. Uh, and I finally figured out that the, the survey was probably done at the same time the McRib came back, so that probably had a little bit to do with it. So. I'm not pointing fingers at, at fat people, though. I, you know, I don't have any room to talk. I'm sort of big myself. When I point a finger, there's three sausages pointing right back at me. So. <laughs> anyway, most of my friends are uh, are girls. I don't have a whole lot of guy friends. That might, might be because I use the phrase guy friends, but um, we'll just say no. That's not the reason. But anyway, I, I just seem to relate to girls uh, more than guys um, in, in some ways. Mostly, I think, because I have stretch marks. Uh, so, uh, most women who have stretch marks, though, you know, they it's sort of a, a symbol of pride, uh, if, you, if you hear me out. You know, most women who have them have had a child. And so when they see these marks on their bodies, they are reminded of the sacrifice they made to, uh, to bear that life and to nourish it and to carry it along for nine months. And uh, when they see their child that they've delivered, they can look at that child and think, wow, even though my body's scarred, this, this makes it all worth it. My stretch marks are more like tallies counting down the days till my rib comes back. So, <laughs> oh, that's my rib talk. It's making me hungry. I didn't eat on the way up here. I, um, I was going to stop. One of my favorite stops on the way from Tupelo to Memphis is a gas station that also has a Taco Bell inside of it, but they, uh, they closed it down. So, um, but I was running a little fuel anyway, so I stopped. But I thought that's such a shame that they closed it down because um, it's one of the greatest inventions in the world to me, having a, a Taco Bell inside of a BP, because where else can you get gas and fuel up your car? So <laughs> I think that was sort of a bad business move right there. Um, I rent a lot of movies. Uh, any of you guys rent from Redbox? The vending machine for entertainment. <laughs> Yay! Thanks. I rented a movie from there recently, and um, I like to sit through the previews. I like to see what's coming up. This is an older movie, though, so um, this movie's been out for a while. But I watched the previews, and a movie called Twilight was on the previews. Anybody seen the Twilight franchise movies? Have I heard of them? Uh, <laughs> heard of them, at least? Yeah! All right. All right. Well, I've never seen them, but... Uh, Apparently there's a, a werewolf and a, a bedazzled vampire chasing around a girl in some weird fantasy love triangle. It's magical, and I don't know, I really get it, so, but I sat through it anyway just because of all the previews. And finally, um, the feature presentation come on, and I got to watch my movie. And all I've got to say is, now that Professor Dumbledore is dead, I don't know how Harry's going to defeat Lord Voldemort, so it doesn't look like he's going to get out of it this time. I do like movies. Anybody seen the movie Gremlins? Remember that movie from the 80s? Yeah. I think I was two when it came out. <laughs> but I've seen it since. Uh, we have a big gremlin population in Tupelo. Oop, I guess I should say mob-wise, gremlins. Sort of a politically incorrect term. I'm not supposed to say the G word. Only they can say the G word. So, mob-wise. Anyway, I do hang out with some mob -wise, and I went to church with some. They invited me to church. It was pretty good until the baptism service. Then things just got weird. <laughs> I'm going to try another one. It was pretty good until the midnight communion. Then things just got weird. One more. It was pretty good 
until the Easter sunrise service, <laughs> then things just got weird. <laughs> anyway, um, for this next bit, it's called uh, Things Sigourney Weaver Will Never Do, or Things You'll Never See Sigourney Weaver Do. I need an audience participant uh, for this. Anybody care to volunteer? <laughs> it's a, it's, you don't have to get up here. You just have to yell out something. You in the back, would you like to do it, man? Me? Yes, please. Yeah. All right. All I need you to do is yell, hey, Sigourney, as I'm walking this way, okay? Action. Hey, Sigourney. <laughs> anyway, so that, was, that was a bad one. Because she's the only person named Sigourney in the world. Wow, that one was so bad you could probably see it from space. I'm sorry. Anyway. I went to England for a uh, for a trip last summer with a buddy of mine. Big differences in England and the United States. We use the dollar, they use the pound, uh, and that's cool. But um, in the United States, it's okay to tell a girl she looks like a million bucks. But it doesn't matter if you're English. It's never okay to tell a girl she looks like a million pounds. So don't ever make that mistake. I mentioned Sigourney Weaver earlier. Um, this was supposed to come right after that joke. So, <laughs> so we'll call it a non sequitur. <laughs> People are weird about their names, you know. They, uh, I don't know, they get sort of uh, rude when you don't really understand where their name comes from or how to spell it or anything. I worked for a deli, um, and I took phone orders, and a guy called in, and he was like, you know, something to order a Ruben. I said, okay, let me just have your name. And he said, Balthazar. <laughs> I said, okay, Balthazar, how do you spell that? Well, like it sounds. <laughs> and I was like, all right, well, it sounds like your mom hated you. That's what it sounds like. So he didn't like that too much. He especially didn't like it when I asked him if he'd be paying with cash, check, gold, frankincense, or murder. <laughs> I like the show Extreme Home Makeover. It's a pretty good show, but it gets a little monotonous. Uh, I think one time they should just do a special, like a, you know, they do Christmas specials and uh, Thanksgiving specials. I think they should do a, an Extreme Home Makeover uh, April Fool's Day uh, edition. <laughs> Move that bus! Oh, sorry, maybe next time. Uh,